Do you believe every school story you hear? Let's find out. School Stories, Legit or Legend, hosted by Kyle Pope. Classrooms are a place that produce tales of bizarre behaviors, life-changing lessons, and extraordinary activities. But are all of them true? Today, you'll be presented with several teacher accounts. Your task is to determine what is legit and what is legend. Have you ever decided that you are better off not following the rules? Did it go terribly wrong or did it work out for the better? Our first story follows a teacher who decided that rules don't matter. It was a few weeks into the new semester and student misbehavior was no longer an issue. So I decided to change up my classroom management technique. Okay, buckos, there's a new rule in town. No more rules. What? Although the students weren't expecting a dramatic change, I knew they would respond appropriately. Uh, Miss Allison, can I go to the media center? There is a new game on the computer that I want to play. I don't see anything that says you can't. Yippee! Why don't you take a nap? That's a good idea! Huh, looks like a free day, huh, Miss Allison? Free day, free day, free day, free day! Everything was working out great, just as I knew it would. Do you think this school story was legit or legend? Stay tuned until the end of the episode to find out. Welcome to Launch Your Classroom, I'm Kyle Pope. As a teacher, you are very familiar with lesson planning. It's where you determine the content you'll cover, which activities you'll use, and how you'll assess your students. Now imagine if you walked into your classroom day after day with no lesson plan. There'd be no structure, you'd have to spontaneously make up activities, and none of your materials would be prepared. Student learning would decrease and you would constantly be strained trying to come up with ideas on the fly. Of course, you know all of this and that is why you plan your lessons. But what about classroom management? Have you mapped out your rules, expectations, and how you'll handle a variety of situations when students start to make poor choices? One of the worst mistakes a teacher can make is responding to misbehavior in the heat of the moment without forethought. Like good lesson planning, good classroom management planning creates a confident teacher and successful students. So today on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to examine key components of a strong classroom management plan and how to put them into practice. Let's begin by taking a look at a classroom management plan template. You probably have many of the elements of a good classroom management plan already in place. Do you have rules and consequences? Do you have established ways to regain student attention before it turns into misbehavior? That's great. Now, are you sure you've covered everything and are prepared for a wide variety of management challenges? This is where a classroom management plan template, like this one, can help you to ensure thoroughness taking the time to think through and write down ideas for communicating expectations, preventing problems, and responding to misbehavior will lay the foundation for clear, strong classroom management. First, you need to set classroom rules. Students need to know what you expect from them, and the easiest way to do it is to establish rules from the very start. Make sure they are clearly posted in the classroom as a visual reminder to everyone. In addition, students will need to know what to expect if a rule is broken, so you'll need to develop consequences and communicate them as well. Generally speaking, the bigger the misbehavior, the stronger the consequence. A big part of classroom management is what a teacher does to prevent misbehavior before it happens. Establish clear routines and procedures and teach, rehearse, and reinforce them as often as necessary. You can prevent misbehavior by defining your expectations for things like 
where your students should put their backpacks, and when and how they are allowed to leave their seat during class time. As minor as this may seem, creating procedures for these small things will give you more time and energy to focus on teaching. Another important element to plan ahead is how to intervene when you see a student getting off task. You may already know it is good practice to move closer to a student who is losing attention, but what else can you do to get students back on track? Planning interventions ahead of time will make your consequences more effective because you won't need to use them as often. Finally, reflect on your positive reinforcement. Sincere praise, smiles, and a thumbs up gesture are all easy ways to reinforce positive behavior. But take the time to plan the specifics. What might be a reason to make a positive parent phone call? What types of rewards might provide motivation for your students? The time you invest in providing positive feedback will earn rewards in terms of your relationship with your students. Classroom management is much more than just correcting misbehavior. Make sure to take the quality time at the beginning of the school year to create, explain, and practice every element of your classroom management plan. This will help you create policies that are clear, timely, and appropriate. Who really benefits from your classroom rules? Are they just a way to keep your students quiet and compliant for your sake? Or do they ensure that all of your students are seen, heard, and supported? That's right, your rules exist so your students can learn and grow. For this reason, it is important to introduce your rules in a positive and purposeful way. My students know that our rules are in place to keep every student safe and successful. Yeah, it's just seven words, but we spend a lot of time on them. Students do best when they completely understand my expectations. Why, I remember the first day I went over the rules with my students. First, I'll make sure my students know what the words actually mean. I'll keep the language simple and define any major terms. After all, these are their rules and they deserve to understand them completely. So, Clarice, what does it mean to be respectful? Being respectful means caring about how I treat others in class. What a great way of putting it, Clarice. Caring about how I treat people. Hmm, here's my next question. What would that kind of caring look like in class? It's important to have students explain the rules in practice. If students describe the rules themselves, they feel more responsible to uphold them. And it gives me a chance to praise positive behavior. So class, what does respect look like? Here's a hint, Arthur's doing it by raising his hand. Oh, yes, raising your hand, listening when others are speaking, and using your polite words like please and excuse me. Oh, yeah! Oh, um, whoops, excuse me. We can't assume anything about a student's previous behavior standards. So, stay positive but firm as students adapt to the class rules. Jasper, do you want to add to Arthur's thought and way to correct yourself? Yeah, so when you're being respectful, you show you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Sometimes people can't tell by how you act. So the best way you can make them comfortable is to show them respect with your words and giving them space. Did you see that? What an amazing learning moment. When students can explain the rules to each other, they're not some sort of demand from me. They're a way to build classroom community. This makes students feel even more accountable for each other. Jasper, you're so thoughtful. You're already answering my final question about respect. Class, why do you think we have this rule? So we all have the space to learn. So we can be good to each other here in class. And in the real world, it's good practice. I couldn't have said it better myself. We are going to have a great year. I can already tell by the way you're discussing how our class rules benefit us all. By rehearsing your rules frequently and discussing their importance, you can keep your classroom running smoothly 
while reassuring students of your expectations. Don't forget, your students are watching you when they think of these rules. So make sure to model them yourself by showing patience, respect, and empathy, which are at the heart of good class rules. Your students will thrive knowing you have their best interests in mind. Have you ever ignored a problem and it went away? Our next school story involves a teacher who decided to test out the old adage, out of sight, out of mind. Now let's watch as this teacher tries to make classroom management issues disappear on their own. It was a normal school day in my science class and I was finishing up a short lecture about atoms and molecules. The class was engaged and harmonious, although that wouldn't last for long. And that is how molecules are held together through chemical bonds. Oh, neat! Yeah, and so now class, if you could all take a piece of the construction paper that I've laid out on your desk, we're going to practice drawing a simple molecule. Hold on, Jasper. I want the green paper. The green is my favorite color, and there's only one. Patrick and Jasper both wanted the same color, and it looked like the situation was starting to escalate. I wondered if I should intervene. No, out of sight, out of mind. Oh no, it's ruined. I, I didn't mean to do that. Hmm. And just like that, through inaction, the problem was solved. Now they each had a piece of green paper. As it turns out, being inactive is better than being proactive. Curious if this is legit? We'll let you know later in the show. You can prevent most misbehavior before it even starts by communicating your expectations. But sometimes student misbehavior still occur in spite of your rules and procedures. What's the secret to misbehavior prevention and intervention? Well, a lot of it comes down to these three strategies. Rehearsing your expectations, using your seating chart, and maintaining a positive tone when you address minor misbehaviors. First, let's talk about prevention. Because my students know my expectations, I don't have to waste time explaining my rules and procedures. Besides, I have posters to remind them. When students know your expectations, your lessons will progress more smoothly since you won't have to waste time re-explaining your rules. Thanks for raising your hand, Arthur. This gives you more opportunities to tell students what they're doing right. Another way I can prevent misbehavior is by acting on my previous knowledge about my students. For instance, I have this one really great, but really distractible student. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Miss Shannon. Hi, Derby. So I made sure to seat her away from the door and close to the front of the room so she can focus. Meanwhile, I found out from a former teacher that this other student of mine is really high energy. And I made it work in our favor by giving him a classroom job. Have more than one high energy student? Good thing there's so much to do to keep your classroom running efficiently. Give these students seats close to their job sites in your classroom so they're less likely to distract other students with their busy habits. Speaking of seating. So you can't prevent everything, and that's when intervention becomes necessary. Your intervention needs to be swift and fair. That way, students are immediately reminded of your expectations. Jasper, I need you to move over to the other side of the room until this assignment is finished. Okay. 
Thank you. Jasper didn't argue since I had already rehearsed our expectations several times. I was also respectful and didn't embarrass him. If your student tries to argue, tell them to meet with you later. Now isn't the time for discussion. Remember, you move the student to keep the peace. For your students, this gives everyone the space to learn. Now that I know these students tend to get chatty, I'll change their places on my seating chart after class today. Remember, you choose the seats and you change the seats when necessary. But don't do it without a reason or too often. Students need predictability. Nonverbal intervention goes a long way too. It's a positive, quiet way to correct off-task behaviors and it allows me to multitask as I monitor the rest of the class. Remember, let your students know your expectations, stick to a seating chart, and remain positive even when you correct minor misbehavior. These practices encourage students to make good decisions because they know that you're on their side even when you correct them. That way you can give students the structure and positive reinforcement they need to be their best selves in your classroom. A good classroom management plan isn't just about preventing and responding to misbehavior. It also recognizes positive behavior. Here are a few categories of positive reinforcement to consider as you learn what will motivate and encourage your class. Let's start with the simplest and progress toward those that include buy-in for more than just you and your individual students. One, specific praise. When you praise a student and state exactly why they have earned it, you are showing the class what behaviors and attitudes you value. In addition, you are showing the particular student that you know them well and you appreciate their efforts to improve. Specific praise can be verbal, such as complimenting a learner for remembering to capitalize correctly in an essay. It can also be nonverbal, such as a thumbs up or displaying assignments with specific positive feedback in the classroom. Two positive contact with parents or guardians. These contacts build a bridge between home and school. Not only do they open communication between you and important adults in your students' lives, they also help you build rapport with students. These partnerships make it easier to work together in the students' best interests. Document all parent and guardian contacts for future reference. And if you can't reach the parent on the phone, try an email or a text. These positive contacts are powerful encouragement to students and they show the families how much you care. Three, reward systems. Some students need added extrinsic motivation for certain tasks. For this reason, many elementary classrooms contain a treasure box filled with low cost trinkets and treats such as small candies, stickers, or toys. Use tangible rewards carefully though. You don't wanna overuse them with students who already have a sense of satisfaction from their accomplishments. Rewards can be experiences too. Five to 10 minutes of a special activity, lunch in the classroom, or the chance to help out a former teacher can all be meaningful rewards for students. Four, and finally, whole class rewards. These are a fantastic way to unite students in working toward a common behavior or academic goal. This type of reward is best suited to tasks that you want all your students to learn, such as turning in homework on time. Make sure that the entire class agrees on the reward, which can be anything from watching a movie that relates to your curriculum to a special snack, as long as it follows school policy. Rewards and recognition matter. When you are intentional about the ways in which you reward students, you create increased engagement, a sense of teamwork, and home involvement that all contribute to student success. Well-planned, positive reinforcement is an essential component of any classroom management plan. Planning is essential to successful classroom management. When a teacher takes the time to develop rules and consequences then explain them to their students, they set clear behavioral boundaries. To help students stay within those parameters, teachers need to determine prevention and intervention steps before the misconduct escalates. Then remember to focus on positive reinforcement to encourage compliance and grow student relationships. So we encourage you to create a classroom management plan 
like ours to help prepare you for any behavioral issue you'll face. This month on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to continue our focus on classroom management. We're going to demonstrate how to successfully prevent distractions through helping students organize their materials. We'll talk to an expert educator about how to ensure you have an effective classroom management plan. On the topic of planning, we're going to dive into some ways a teacher can develop their own mental wellness plan. Then, at the end of the month, we'll take a look at some questions related to classroom management on Launch Your Quiz Show. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to get all of our upcoming professional development content. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on Launch Your Classroom. Have you ever taken advice from President Abraham Lincoln? He's quoted as saying, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening my ax. Our next story features a teacher who planned for success, just like Lincoln. I had just completed my classroom management plan before school began. It took some time, but I knew it would be worth the effort. My classroom rules were well thought out and I could easily explain them and answer any questions the students had. Patrick's fidgeting had started to distract others, but I had planned for something like that. All my planning made for a rewarding day and a rewarded class. And now it's time to find out which school stories are legit or legend. Do you remember the teacher who threw away the rules to achieve success? It's a legend. We made it up. How about the educator who had the power to make problems disappear? Is it legit? Not this time. It's completely legend. And how about the teacher who used a classroom management plan to get results? Our research shows that planning for behavioral management is extremely effective. If you said this one is legit, then you are correct. How did you do today? Did you get all three? Or were you misled by these extraordinary school stories? I'm Kyle Pope. Join us next time on School Stories, Legit or Legend.